God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. Right? Right. Okay. He knew no sin. He knew no sin. He had no capacity to internalize temptation or transport it into sin like we do. He committed no sin. 1 Peter 2.22 1 Peter 2.22 Hebrews 7.26 says this. Hebrews 7.26 He is holy. He is undefiled. He is separate from sinners. He did not sin. He could not sin. And that's obvious. Well then, some theologians would say, well, if he couldn't sin, then temptation wasn't real. See, I bet you follow that. Then the temptation wasn't real. That's not true. You don't always sin when you are tempted, which means you can be <laughs> tempted and not sin. We probably are tempted every day of the week to sin or to succumb to the things that the world wants you to do. Every day we see on television hundreds and hundreds of commercials. I don't have many times we watch this info commercials real quick because Sherry says, I want to buy that. That sounds good. That sounds good. I think I'm going to buy that. The temptation appears in front of our eyes, but to most of us, we just turn the channel. But you have other temptations that you yield to. Lying. I mean, you have other temptations, buying stuff that you have no business buying, putting stuff on credit that you're not going to be able to pay for. You know doing stupid things all the time because you're tempted by something you know you don't need, don't have, and you buy it anyway, then you have to repossess it. I mean, you know, we do all kinds of things because we, we, we internalize it inside and we sin doing it on the outside. God saw the outside and could not internalize it and turn it into sin. You could be hit with some strong temptation and you can be victorious and walk away and not sin and thank God and praise God and be triumphant. As Christians, we do that. But that doesn't mean it wasn't a temptation. Don't ever say, I can, don't ever say well, I can't be tempted to do anything wrong. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> Because you can imagine that Satan's going to hear you say that or the world's going to hear you say that and they're going to try to get you to do it, right? The fact that Jesus couldn't sin doesn't mean he couldn't be tempted. Satan tempted him. He tempted him personally. The devil came and tempted him personally. Demons came and tempted him personally. Demons working in the wicked leaders of Israel and one came after Jesus, and he was exposed to sin all around him as the person, the system. And Satan worked its way through human depravity. It, can, it came at him at all sides. He saw it all. He understood it in his mind, but he could not internalize capacity to turn it into sin. The scripture says it's better to be saved when you're young, when you haven't yielded most of your life to sinful activity. I'm not tempted to do a lot of things because I've never had to do it. If you've done it before, Satan's going to tempt you to do it again. The temptation is so strong because you have yielded your life, most of your life, doing sinful things, and all of a sudden you get saved, and all of a sudden you think the temptation's going to go away, or you? The temptation is going to be much stronger because Satan is going to say, you can do that and still be saved. And you say, hallelujah, woo-wee, I can do it. Or any other thing that we do. But see, Christ could be tempted, but not internalize it on the inside to do it. And if you've never done it, and you've never yielded your flesh to doing it when you're young, Say, you know, I can see people smoke all the time. It doesn't bother me a lick. Well, smoke a lick. 
Uh, yeah, I see people drink on TV all the time. It doesn't tempt me to do that. I can watch all kinds of things on TV and not be tempted to do it because I've never had but you know what? I'm not going to tempt myself too but I'm going to turn the channel real quick. I'm not going to test my temptation ability. <coughs> Every temptation that came to Jesus was temptation from the outside. He did not like it. He is fully human, but you can be fully human and perfect as Adam was. In the case of Jesus, he was fully human, perfect, and his humanity, his perfection as a man is protected by his deity, which is infinitely holy. The holiness of God protected him on the inside of yielding to outside temptation. <coughs> You know what helps you not to yield to temptation? It's hearing the word of God. What do you think the Bible says to read the scriptures? You read the Bible long enough, you make the commitment to read the Bible, God speaking to you, if it gets on the inside, it will change you on the inside and you will not be able to internalize what the temptation is on the outside. But, if you choose, no, I'm not going to be tempted to do that. I'm not going to sin. I'm not going to gossip. I'm not going to get mad. I'm not going to lose my temper. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything wrong. I can do it on my own. I don't need the Bible. I don't need God. I don't need good preaching. I'm just going to ignore everything. You watch it. You already did. Mm -hmm. You what? You already did. You already did. You have the temptation. Well, I don't have time to read the Bible. You are lying. Mm -hmm. You have guilt, the temptation, the sake of you don't have time. Cut off the dynasty for crying out loud. Read your Bible. <laughs> You may like it, and guess what? Satan has no rotten apples on the outside. Satan doesn't give you an apple of temptation, and there's a worm crawling out of it. Because the first thing you would do is throw the apple away. There are no bruises on apples that Satan gives you. You bite into it because you think it's good, and after you bite into it, you bite into a worm. But you've already bitten into it. Which is worse. When you're tempted. When you are tempted. When you are tempted. To be disobedient. To what God's word tells you to do. You have yielded to the temptation. Not to be obedient. But you have to work at it. I've said that in 1 Peter chapter 1. After 27 lessons, you should be giving it after why obedient Christians are holy and they are obedient to what God says and we have to practice the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit guides us in the way we're guided is through the Word of God. You should leave this place and say, well, another sermon by Charles. And throw it all. But you'll be tempted to. You'll be tempted to, and most of them just might do that, except for Richard goes home and internalizes what I say. Right? He does. He does. We need to internalize what we have been learning. And God gives us the power to do it, right? Because believe me, the closer you get to God, the stronger the temptation on the outside is going to be. But the less apt you are to be tempted to do it because you cannot internalize what is on the outside. Heavenly Father tonight, it was necessary to prove God, Son, Christ could defeat Satan, sin and hell to provide the means whereby God could save us. 
He won the battle. He won the victory. And thank you for the victory that was because we who have been bought, brought, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, saved by his death on the cross, glorifying you that you could be able to bring about justly salvation because of the perfect sacrifice that Christ made on the cross. May we live this place, not just saying, well, another service today, but that we're going to internalize and ask the Holy Spirit to grant us wisdom how to apply the principles that we have heard tonight and ask God to give us a resolution that we are going to take at least 15 minutes a day to have some presence with the Holy Spirit. I pray that we might do that that we may be glorified to you, that we become the church that you want us to be, become the Christian you want us to be. And we'll be careful to give the praise in Christ's name and pray. And all the people said, Amen. 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 And amen. There's cake in there on the counter if anybody wants some. You can, you can eat it now or you can take it home. I called cake.